Hey gang, it's JC, and this is the Daily Dose for Valentine's Day, Monday, February 14th, 2011. A combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. Archives, top of the page. Some great eye candy features the last couple of weeks. You can check them out in the archives if you've missed anything the last couple of days. So let's talk some Grammys here. Does it seem like Katy Perry is on television about once a week playing the same song? That's what it sure seems like to me. Um, blah. Christina Aguilera gets a web redemption last night. You know, there's something about her singing. I mean, she's a very accomplished singer. But when you're going, constantly, it sort of diminishes the impact when you do it. I mean, if you just sing the song and then throw one or two of those in, the <laughs> I don't know. She's the millionaire. I'm not. Let her go ahead and glottal away. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer was on. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Gwyneth Paltrow last night. Fabulous Baker Boys, a little bit. And then uh, Katie, uh, not, uh, 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 Lady Gaga. Uh, I got my Lady Antebellums and my Lady Gagas mixed up. And then we call the baby here Lady Goo Goo. She, anyhow, she shows up in an egg last night. Huh. Where have I heard that before? Maybe Spinal Tab? Yeah, you know. And CeeLo, who is a uh, squatty, uh, that's a kind term, you know, the giant egg shows up and he's looking for a giant frying pan and some hot grease to fry it up. Uh, Eminem last night, uh, very impressive. Jagger just to tore down the house. I thought Jagger was amazing last night. Why was Chris Christopherson out of breath bringing Barbara Streisand out on stage? She sang Evergreen. It was nice, big deal, you know. Rihanna. Well, you know, you got to have at least one slut on the stage, and she is as slutty as they get. And there's just something about those gyrations and the way she opens up her crotch and everything like that. It's a, it's a great country. I don't know. Um, record of the year last night. The Alan Parsons Project, Eye in the Sky. Oops, that's right. No, it's a, what's the, 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 it's a quarter after three and I need you now or something. If you, if you hum that song right along with Eye in the Sky with the Alan Parsons Project, it's the same damn song. I identified this three months ago on uh, the Big 550 KTRS. We played the song side by side. It's the same damn song. I, I, I don't know. They should have thanked him in their acceptance speech. I, I guess, you know, country acts get to steal some melodies, note for note, from classic rock songs from the 1970s, and they get awards for it. Oh, Lady Gaga, I think she's interesting to watch, but she's cle clearly ripping off Madonna. Even the new song, that's another one of those songs. You play them side by side, and you got, uh, what do you want, folks? I don't know. <sighs> Justin Bieber, not the best new artist of the year. Bob Dylan asked for a drink. Or that he can't wait to meet Pink. Or, or he just got a new kitchen sink. I, I have no idea. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, yeah, Express Yourself. That's the song, the Madonna song. Express Yourself. It sounds exactly like uh, Born This Way. Uh, and then how about this one? Remember the chick in the Wayne's World movies, Tia Carrere? She was so pretty, by the way. I went on those junkets to Hollywood to interview all the people from those movies. And I remember people always asking me, you know, JC always go out to California, meet all these fabulous, beautiful movie stars out of the women, you know, who are the prettiest ones. And I always say, well, first of all, Tom Cruise. And, uh, but I always identified Tia Carrere as one of the ones who was right up there near the top. You know, um, and there's a couple of other, Yasmin Bleeth, very, very incredibly good looking and just sexy and just, oh, just wanted every inch of her. And also, uh, you know, I've said this before, I'll say it again, Dolly Parton, um, she didn't have all the makeup and all those goofy wigs and all that nonsense. She was just sort of like sitting there like a normal person. And uh, I was just flabbergasted by the quality of her skin around her neck and shoulder blades. And it was all showing. And she did it. the skin was just unbelievable. And she was really pretty, too. But anyhow, I mentioned this because Tia Carrere won the Grammy last night for Best Hawaiian Music Album. She also won it in 2009. It's one of those awards they don't televise, but maybe they ought to if they're going to put Tia Carrera on. Uh, remember that dress that Lindsay Lohan showed up in court last week and it was this white figure fitting, hugging dress? Uh, $575 and it's sold out everywhere. You can't buy one. Everybody wanted to look just like her. Pretty good looking dress. Not sure you want to wear that going into court, but if you got that figure, if you can pull it off, go for it. 
Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler had the new number one movie in America. They almost lost that to Justin Bieber. Just go with it. $31 million. Justin Bieber's movie, Never Say Never, uh, missed out by about a million dollars on being number one. So, bad weekend. <laughs> bad weekend for Justin. Uh, remember Millie Vanilli? Girl, you know it's true. And then they found out that, what was it, Rob and Fabrice were uh, lip syncing and somebody else actually sang the songs. They hold the dubious distinction of having the only Grammy in the history of the award being revoked. Grammy people took the award away. One of the guys is dead. One of them is still, you know, sleeping in a gutter. They're going to make a movie about the story of Millie Vanilli. So watch for that. All right, uh, Billboard has just released their annual Music Money Makers list. Basically what they do is they take all the top 40 artists and they throw everything in, like album sales, digital music sales, online music, video streams, revenue from touring, but they only do it in this country. So, you know, if you are like been touring overseas, they don't include that. So it's just all domestic. According to that, Lady Gaga, number one, last year, $30 million. Bon Jovi, $30 million, just a little short of that, of Lady Gaga's numbers. Roger Waters, Dave Matthews Band, Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift at six, Michael Buble at seven with $19 million. Eagles at number eight, uh, Black Eyed Peas, Paul McCartney at 10, Eric Clapton 20, Carol King and James Taylor 25 and 26. Remember those Chilean miners? They're down there for, uh, oh, you know, months. And now word is beginning to trickle out little by little just exactly what was going on down there. The uh, families smuggled pot down there for the guys. And I'm in favor of it, too, because if I'm trapped in a hole for three months and I got nothing going on down there, there's two things I want. And one of them is going to be something to alter my state of mind. And the other one would be a woman, but they couldn't get a woman down there. The guys asked for blow-up dolls. I want to repeat that. Those Chilean miners were stuck down there and they asked for blow-up dolls. And uh, th that request was denied. You get a bunch of guys in a hole for three months and ask for blow-up dolls, send them the damn blow-up dolls. They didn't do it. The, uh, the, 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 request, well, the doctor who was in charge of this whole thing thought that it would lead to too many fights. I saw her first. Uh, a woman with a condition where eating junk food gives her orgasms has stepped forward. She says she's put on 200 pounds in five years because of it. It's like that old joke about the woman who has an orgasm every time she sneezes. And her girlfriend says, gosh, really? Wow. Are you taking anything for that? She says, yeah, pepper. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, shift into Valentine's Day mode here. Reader's Digest has listed eight foods, eight foods, that you're not supposed to ever order on Valentine's Day for reasons that probably should seem obvious, but I'll point them out anyhow. Number one is beans. You really need me to explain that. Number two, lobster and crab. Yeah, because you're like sitting there tearing apart a, uh, an animal that was alive about ten minutes ago. Uh, and it's flying everywhere. It's really, really messy, obviously. Spinach at number three because it gets caught in your teeth. Garlic bread, unless you're both having it. Uh, wings and ribs. Yeah, anything that uh, that would require a wet nap uh, afterwards. Uh, oversized hamburger at number six. Yeah, because everything is running all over everything. Uh, number seven is soup. It sort of ruins the mood when you're just... You know, and uh, anything off the dollar menu. Sitting there on Valentine's Day trying to cut corners and save money. Very unromantic. A couple of other Valentine's Day fun facts here. Catholics... Do not have to go to church on Valentine's Day. Pope nixed that back in 1969. But up until 69, people had to go to church on Valentine's Day. St. Valentine's Day. But it gets better because there was no actual person named St. Valentine. So we got a St. Valentine and no person to go with it. Valentine comes from the Latin word meaning worthy, strong, and powerful. And there are actually three different saints who were described as Valentine. Just another lie they told us in grade school. Number three, the idea of celebrating romantic love on Valentine's Day came from the 14th century poet Chaucer. Anybody who was in college and had to sit through the Canterbury Tales knows who that is. Uh, number four, the idea of sending Valentine's Day cards did not come, here's another why, from an imprisoned priest who sent secret messages to his girlfriend on the outside. 
I remember hearing that back in like second grade. It's all made up. The legend was made up, created completely by the American Greeting Card Company. I get mad when I hear stuff like this. Number five, the woman who invented mass-produced Valentine's cards got the idea when she was 19 years old when one of her dad's friends hit on her. Esther Howland got a homemade Valentine card from one of her dad's pervert friends in 1847 and got the idea of mass-producing paper and lace cards. I'm not sure I understand the connection, but again, another one of those lies. Only about 15 million e-cards are sent. That's less than 10% of the total Valentine's Day card production and consumption. Four out of every five Valentine's cards given in the United States are in grade school classrooms. About a billion Valentine's cards exchanged every year, most of them in grade school. And in Korea, you think you got troubles here with all the different holidays you're supposed to buy stuff for and buy cards for. There's a holiday on the 14th of every month in Korea uh, starting in January. Candle Day, Valentine's Day, White Day, Black Day, Rose Day, Kiss Day, Silver Day, Green Day, Music Day, Wine Day, Movie Day, and Hug Day. And that's it. Have yourself a nice Valentine's. That's it. The Daily Dose for Monday, February 14th, 2011. A combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. We talk to you every day here on the Big 550 KTRS in St. Louis from 10 o'clock until 1. The lovely Trish Gazelle is along with us. And Lori Mack now joins us for our shows on Monday. And, of course, tomorrow, Tuesday, we're live at Lester's on Clayton Road in Ladue for the big Stan Musial Presidential Medal of Freedom. They've got a lot of cool stuff. I'll tell you about it tomorrow. But Lester's the place to be um, on Clayton Road in Ladue Tuesday, tomorrow, because uh, it's just going to be such a very, very cool day, even though Albert is going to try and spoil it for everybody. We'll talk more about that, too. In the meantime, that's it. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye. Bye.